What's up y'all, it's Dr. Paul with another installment in our video series on the conservation of this copy of Detective Comics. Number 59, which went on newsstands late 1941, has a January 1942 uh, publication date. As you recall, we dry cleaned this book, we did some tape removal, we did a whole series of, of wet cleans and deacidifications focused on removal of the color touch. We knew it was disclosed by the seller that we had some color touch here. And it turns out there was much more color touch than was originally disclosed. Uh, I think the seller was being honest and that was all they were aware of. So no harm there. We bought it knowing we were going to do a conservation. Now, we have successfully almost entirely removed the appearance of color touch from the cover here. This, for example, was black when we got the book. These lines were black when we got the book. These areas were blue. This area was green. So we've largely removed all that. There is a little tiny bit of evidence on the back still of the color touch. And again, for reference, there was originally a black line, a sharp black line right here. What we have now is very faded indigo. That's all that remains of the color touch that is bled through. Okay, we have a little bit here, a little bit on this line, a little bit in these areas. Okay, I'd like to completely get rid of the evidence of the color touch here before we move on. As we mentioned before, we've paid a price for the color touch removal. Color touch is no joke, boys and girls. Um, this is why people stay away from books with color touch. Um, trimmed books and books with color touch, they're a lot of work and you're gonna have to give, you're gonna make sacrifices to get rid of the, uh, the color touch. So what have we sacrificed? For one, you can see we have all this bleed through. This wasn't here when we started. We have red across here, we have blue across here, and it's extensive to bleed through. Two, we've lost intensity on some of these inks that the book was born with. So this was more like a brick red, and now it's, a, it's an orange color. Uh, similarly here, this blue was much darker. This is a faded blue now. This was a, a darker indigo when we started. We've faded some of these colors a bit too, um, but we knew that and we knew that we were going to have trade-offs. Okay, so that's a summary of what's been done so far. You, um, In the last episode, I had blotting paper and I did very um, precise, targeted blotting of the areas that had the color touch. And we did remove a lot of ink a lot of which was color touch. These are the samples of the blotter paper, the ink that was removed, okay? So that was reasonably successful. And I wanna switch gears. I wanna, I wanna go in a slightly different direction now. We're not 100% of the way to where I wanna be here, but what I'd like to do is I'm actually gonna shift gears and I'm gonna start an aqueous bath in calcium hydroxide, dilute, with photo bleaching concurrent. This is a method that's been described in the conservation literature, and it's something that I've worked on. Um, I've had very good success removing very stubborn stains that some say are not 100% not removable, um, like mold stains. And um, I think that we have a good chance at getting rid of this color bleed and getting rid of the very last of the evidence of the color touch here as well with that method. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna be putting this in our aqueous bath, which for me is my photo developing tray that you've seen me use before in previous videos. Um, we're gonna have a, a piece of support um, Hollytex underneath. And then we're going to put a, just a very thin layer over this so the paper is going to be wet it's enough that the paper will continue to take the fluid up 
um, kind of like a sponge, but it's not going to be, uh, there's not going to be like a quarter inch of, of, of uh, fluid. It's going to basically just, it'll sit there in the fluid and be, and be wet like a sponge. Um, so that for, for my photograph tray is about 400 um, mils. And that 400 mils is going to be 100 mils of our super saturated calcium hydroxide solution. Remember how I told you how we make that up? We put um, some amount, approximately two grams, but more than that is okay in the bottom of a vessel of calcium hydroxide um, in the powder. And then we add to that tap water and we shake it up and then we let it settle. And when it settles, we know that the clear solution above is saturated. That means it's 1.6 grams per liter, approximately at room temperature of calcium hydroxide per liter of water. And um, we can pour off the top of that, which is known as decanting, and then we can mix that with water to dilute it. So what we're gonna do is uh, one part that solution, that saturated solution, and three parts water, so that's going to give us a 4x dilution. We're going to end up with a 0.4 grams per liter calcium hydroxide. That's going to act as a mild bleaching agent. And at the same time, concurrent with that fluid, um, that aqueous bath, we're going to also have our LEDs. Remember, we use the LEDs that are focused on wavelengths that will knock out some stains but not affect inks too much. And that is the wavelength 450 to 460 nanometers, which is visible blue. And so we're gonna be doing those two concurrently and we're gonna be looking to knock out this bleed through from the natural colors that the book was born with and see if we can also decrease this bleed through from the color touch with that method. So I will show you that setup and wrap up the video there, and then next time we'll show results. All right, we've got the cover and our photo tray, and we've got a piece of Polytex underneath it. I've got the first 200 liters of my, uh, rather 200 microliters of my solution here. I'm gonna make sure I wet the paper and then I'm gonna add 200 more water. You do wanna make sure you wet the paper pretty quickly and evenly. So otherwise you can get tide marks very quickly. All right. And then as I mentioned, we're gonna be doing photo bleaching concurrent so this is just a plastic lid that I put some reflective tape on. That's to keep the light inside the book, inside the tray rather with the book. And I have my LED arrays that you've seen before. We used them on TJ's copy of uh, Marble Premiere number eight. And I'm gonna leave the book like this. I'm gonna check it regularly and we're gonna see if we can't get some good photo bleaching, deacidification, and knock down some of that um, bleed through from the inks on the cover, as well as knock down that um, bleed through from the color touch. All right, next video will be results. So. I hope you're out there enjoying the hunt, and until next time, take care of one another.